this is one that you know we tend to get every year about this time of year, which Jesus born on December 25th. And also, what year was he born? I'll answer the latter question. It's the year zero. <laughs> and I was like, think of the calendar. There was a year zero, right? There, they went from no, one, there was not a year zero. It went zero. from 1 AD to 1, or 1 BC, 1 AD. Right, so yeah. there was no year zero. There, right, there's yeah. the clarification. And by the way, he wasn't born on probably 1 AD either. There's a good chance that he was born more like two or three. Is that right? Yeah, you know, when you, when you go back and... Um, you look at, at some of the things that have to do with the history. He's, he's, he's born pretty close to, to 1 BC uh, um, uh, when you're going back and look at the history. But um, there are a series of conjunctions that, uh, that took place between Jupiter and Regulus. And the, you want to explain the, what a conjunction is? Conjunction is when a star and a planet, for example, that's what I'm talking about right now. Come together. In fact, uh, last from week... From our perspective, from, from the Earth, they, yeah. they cross each other's paths, and so right. they're a brighter spot in the sky. Right. So last week, actually, there was a conjunction of Saturn and Venus, and uh, naked eye, you couldn't tell the difference between the two. They were right over the top of each other. And so, uh, I, and I don't know if you, if I'm, I'm, a, I'm a geek that way, so I went out and looked <laughs> he at it. He got really excited yeah. about it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's a dot in the sky. So anyway, this, this has to do with a lot of stuff, including history uh, and that kind of thing. Um, the, the time uh, when Jesus was born has always been de- determined by the date of Herod's death. Uh, remember Herod the Great, he dies uh, in, the, in the gospel story in Matthew. <clears throat> and that, that time uh, has to do with a, a number of things that were taking place in history at that point, which includes a... Uh, a um, uh, an eclipse of the moon, and and so there were a couple of events that took place. There were there was the the killing of a couple of Jewish uh, rabbis um, because they had promoted taking down a Roman um, eagle, and actually they'd taken it down, and so uh, they were put to death um, during that period of time. And in the history, specifically in the in a history called. Uh, the works of Josephus, he talks about the fact that there was an eclipse of the moon uh, at, at that point. Um, there were another a number of other events that had to take place. Turns out the only time that that could have actually taken place and had enough time before Passover. Passover is connected with that too. And I'm trying to make this short, but um, the only time that that could have taken place is in 1 B.C., um, in the spring of 1 BC. So obviously that puts the birth of Jesus uh, just before that. And so Jesus could have been born in the winter of 2 BC, which would be right before the spring of 1 BC, um, or he could, be, could have been born the previous year. Uh, at the time that the shepherds come to visit Jesus, uh, Jesus is uh, with his parents living in a house in Bethlehem, they're no longer in the manger or in the, the in, yeah. Oh yeah, did I, what did shepherds. I say? Oh yeah, sorry, I meant the wise men, thanks. Uh, so when the wise men visit Jesus, he's in a house and um, the term that he's u- that's used for him is no longer an infant. Uh, it's a term that means uh, basically a, a, young, a young child or a toddler. And, and so there's an indication there that the, the wise men came after the shepherds. The shepherds were there immediately after the birth of Jesus. It looks like the wise men came later on. And if, if that's the case, then the wise men uh, could have been coming in the, in the winter um, right before the death of Herod in 1 BC. Okay, so having said all that, we don't know exactly when Jesus was born because uh, the Bible doesn't say. Uh, the, the celebration of the, the 25th of December does not come from paganism. You know, as, you know, sometimes people get this idea that it came from Saturnalia. Saturnalia was celebrated uh, from the 17th to the 23rd of December. It wasn't celebrated on the 25th. And so... Uh, kind of so, hovering around the winter solstice, right? Y- yeah. Well, actually, no. No, no, no. Saturnalia wasn't on the winter solstice. And in the 21st, the winter solstice? Well, it is in our calendar. Oh, okay. It wasn't in their calendar. And so um, the, there's another uh, feast that was called the Feast of Sol Invictus, but that looks like it was a, it was a response to Christmas. 
And so it was on, on the day that we celebrate Christmas, but it was long after they'd already been celebrating Christmas. Uh, There's a war on Christmas, the original war yeah, on exactly. Christmas. Uh, and, and so when you're, when you're talking about the December 25th date, most likely where it came from was not from, uh, from the birth of Jesus. It came from the death of Jesus. And so in the Western church and the Northern African churches, they believe that Jesus died on March 25th. And there was, uh, there was a tradition that you died, if, if you were a holy man or if you were a great man, that you died on the same day that you were conceived. Mm. And so if you died on March 25th, then the that would be the day that you would be conceived. And so that would be the date of the Annunciation to Mary. Uh, and so they taught that Mary was, was spoken to by Gabriel on March 25th, mm. And then you add nine months to that, and what you get is December 25th. Mm. And uh, in, the Eastern, in the Eastern church, in the Greek tradition, uh, they believe that Jesus died on April 6th. Um, and obviously, you, add, uh, you, you go, okay, well, then he's conceived on April 6th. And you add nine months to that, you get January 6th. And so in, in the Eastern churches, Christmas is celebrated on January 6th. And in the Western churches, Christmas is celebrated. Even now? Yes, even now, mm. on December 25th. And so that most likely is where it came from. And that's really early. And so a guy named Hippolytus, for example, uh, uh, talked about uh, the fact that Christmas should be celebrated on December 25th way back in, in the third century. And so most of the stuff that uh, talks about um, Christmas or uh, talks about pagan celebrations are fourth century or later, over a hundred years after we have writings by Christians saying that uh, Christmas should be celebrated on December 25th. And so, you know, that's, that's most likely where it came from. And so, no, it doesn't have anything to do with paganism at all. And I'm a guy who used to teach that. And what, what happened was I did some more checking and uh, did some more uh, study on that and found out that I was absolutely wrong. So there you go. Yeah, I think you kind of answered a gamut of questions in that, you know, is Christmas a pagan holiday? No. Uh, the, the other question we had is, what is the star of Bethlehem? And it has to do, again, with the birth of Christ and what you're talking about, the conjunctions that were going on in the sky. Right. And there's something obviously supernatural in that, too, because the star in that, in that instance leads the wise men to Jesus, but then also plants itself over his house. Like, you can't find a star that would point you to someone's house right now. Right. I mean, yeah, when so I, something's happening there, Yeah, right? something's going on. And stars are equated with angels also in the Bible. And so you have it in the book of Job. You also have it in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, Job, chapter 38. It, it talks about the, the stars singing for joy at the creation of the, of the, of the or, or at the laying of the foundations of the earth. And it also calls them the, the sons of God, talking about angels in that passage. And so stars are equated with angels. But uh, the whole star thing is, is really interesting because the guys who were following the star were astrologers. And so what, what God's doing in Matthew's gospel when he's leading these guys with a star, what, he, what he's doing is he's giving them signs in the heavens that they're going to respond to. And so uh, I was talking earlier about um, in... Uh, in 3 BC and also in 2 BC, there's a number of conjunctions that, that are, are really um, interesting that take place between Jupiter, which is the, the king planet, and Regulus, which is the king star in Leo, which is the king constellation. Mm. And uh, Leo is also a lion. And one of the things that you need to remember is that in the, in the book of Daniel, you have Daniel becoming the head of these guys. Mm, the head magi. The, the head magi. And these guys obviously come hundreds of years later, but they still have, apparently have a tradition from Daniel himself about a king that's going to be born in Israel. And um, what, what gets them clued in on that is this star. Uh, and most likely, you know, astrologers are all into conjunctions. So basically what happens is Jupiter comes in and has a close conjunction with Regulus, and then it goes by, by Regulus, starts going down towards another constellation, which is Virgo, stops, it's called retrograde motion, stops, comes back, 
goes over the top of Regulus, makes a, you know, basically goes over Regulus, comes back around Regulus, stops again, and then goes back towards Virgo. It kind of makes a halo mm. over the king star in the king constellation that's called Leo, which is the con, uh, which is connected with Judah, the line of the tribe of Judah, that whole thing. And you've done this study before. We've, I think we've got it on our YouTube page. If you uh -huh. just look, search Bethlehem star, he actually goes through, and I think we even put the, you know, the PowerPoint when you're doing it and showing what the stars look like. You know, yeah. you can go see it back, go back and forth. And again, that's something from our perspective. You look up in the sky, you're seeing the star move because it's obviously not, you know, it's, some, it's not a star. It's not staying put. It's a planet that's moving right. back yeah. and forth. And yeah. so it's moving in the sky, you know, slowly, obviously. But right. you got your... And this is happening over days and weeks is what's happening. But these, but these guys went out and studied the stars. And so it's, a, it's, it's not a for sure thing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we don't know of any comets. We don't know of any uh, 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 nova, uh, uh, novi is how you would pronounce it. But um, we don't know of any of those kind of things, something, something bright that would happen during those days. Usually that's, that's found in the histories. And so this is this is something that's that's pretty interesting, mm. and it, it's it's something that these guys would be clued into, and it would be a big deal to an astrologer. And so God uses signs in the heavens to reach these guys. Uh, cool thing about that is God reaches people where they're at, and then He brings them to Jesus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He doesn't leave them how they are. That's the good thing. Right. Yeah. 